My name is Rob Reeder. I'm a high-speed converter application engineer for analog devices. Today I'd like to discuss a little bit about the AD9467 evaluation board. The AD9467 is a 16-bit, 250 megasample per second A to D converter, which is capable of 75 dB SNR and plus 90 dB SFDR at 100 megahertz IFs. I'm going to talk a little bit about the equipment, some of the know-how and the trade-offs that uh, needs to be considered when running a a high-speed converter like this. So what I have here on, on my left-hand side is the evaluation board for the AD9467. And then I also have the uh, standard data capture card for the AD9467 as well as all our other high-speed converters today. Simply just need to connect these two together and uh, power them up. There's two pieces of software that are required, the visual analog and uh, also the spy controller. Both of these are free to download on the analog website at www.analog.com slash FIFO, F-I-F-O. So let's first discuss on how to uh, set this up. First you need to open the spy controller. And if it doesn't come up automatically with the 9467, a configuration file, you may receive an error. Skip over it and then go back and then open the correct configuration file for the 9467. And then I'll maximize this. So by opening the spy controller first, this ensures that both the data capture board and the eval board are talking to the PC. This also allows that the spy uh, link that goes through the data capture board is also uh, connected and talking to the, the A to D converter. The next piece of software you need to open up is Visual Analog. Simply click on the Visual Analog and it should come up looking for the 9467. Since you've already connected the SPI uh, controller software, it's already talking, so if that's been successful then the uh, Visual Analog will be successful in determining what converter you're actually trying to evaluate. So here I'm going to pull up a canvas of an average FFT because we want to look at the output spectrum and look at the SNR and SFDR. But before that happens, you actually need to program the FPGA within the data capture board. All you have to do is automatically select yes and it will program the FPGA with the right or correct bin file for the 9467 in order to capture the data correctly. Alright, now let's move on to some of the hardware requirements. In order to achieve a very good performance or very low SNR, um, what we, we need to do is actually have a very low phase noise or, or very low jitter uh, oscillator or a signal generator in order to use for the clock input. In the case that I have here, I'm going to use a uh, oven controlled uh, crystal oscillator made by Winslow and Associates. It's at 250 mega samples per second or megahertz. And then I also have, coupled with this, a uh, tight uh, a band pass filter that will uh, filter out a lot of the extra spurious or noise that's coming out of the, the oscillator. You can also use a signal generator that's acceptable as well, but you need to have, make sure that it's very low phase noise. If you look at the standard uh, jitter calculation curves, in order to achieve the 75 dB of SNR, if you take the test case of a 100 megahertz analog input, uh, you're going to need 200 uh, femtoseconds or less in order to achieve the 75 dB. So this just gives you a quick example of what type of signal generator you'll need to, need to use or oscillator that you'll need to use if you're doing 100 megahertz IFs or even higher. So simply connect up the, uh, the oscillator to the clock input. Go ahead and select Run on the canvas for the 9467 average FFT canvas. And what should be displayed is uh, basically a rolling noise floor. We haven't connected the analog input yet, so you won't see any, uh, any spurious just now. The next thing we need to do is connect in the, the analog input. Here we have uh, up top here, I'm going to use a Rodian Schwartz SMA100 uh, signal generator. Um, this is a very low jitter, low phase noise uh, signal generator which is one of the best in the industry. So something like this, or um, maybe a little bit less in, uh, in performance could be used. But again, you can't use uh, a simple 
a simple signal generator or a function generator for an analog input. You need something that still has low jitter and low broadband noise um, in order to get the performance of the A to D converter. So in order to ensure that I get the best performance, all signal generators have some amount of spurious, so I'm going to filter out the spurious of the signal generator using a TTE filter such as this. We use bandpass filters of 10% or, uh, or less uh, bandwidth and 7th uh, order ellipticals. So I simply connect this up to the analog input, and then I turn it on. You can see that I'm a little bit below full scale, so I'm going to adjust this to we're right at full scale. or 1 dB below. So right now I'm achieving uh, about 75 dB SNR full scale and my SFDR is 88, 89 uh, dBC. So one of the key features that we'd, I'd like to show here on the, uh, on the 9467 is it actually has a buffer linearization uh, current within the uh, 9467 which can be accessed through the SPI. This allows uh, customers like yourself in order to maximize the SFDR uh, per the bandwidth that you're going to be using the, the converter over. So here we can see that as I change the buffer current I can increase the SFDR from 88 to 89 to uh, roughly 92 dB SFDR, so I've gained about 3 dB in performance.